Right, this is a bit of a muck around video to test some streaming stuff for the business, but I'll actually achieve something with it, hopefully. Uh, we're doing a comparison test between the Garmin Dual HRM strap and the uh, Polar Pro. Uh, it's just a, a simple issue that I've seen a lot of people run into, which is getting just poor heart rate readings out of the Garmin stuff, which is pretty straightforward from our point of view to test and I'll just run you through it. All we're going to do is put the contacts together, track a clamp on it and then test the continuity of those two uh, buckles on the outside because uh, long and short of it is this little guy is picking up obviously sensors off your chest, deriving a heart rate from that. The contacts on here are giving a crappy connection it's getting crap data and a lot of the time it's either comes in when you start sweating and you make a better contact or you just wind up with peaks and troughs the whole time. Um, the vibe is you're meant to replace these yearly, um, keep them washed, whatever. This belt's a couple of months old, it's been washed and comparing it to the polar stuff it's just night and day. So all we've done is we've, as mentioned, clamped it, a bit of cardboard so we're not making any contact with the bulldog clip to affect our results. Tracking on the table so I'm not touching it. Uh, cut across to a multimeter. Probes together on the multimeter so we can make sure there's no resistance or anything we care about in the chain there. And then simply track it on the Garmin belt and see what our number is. Uh, and we're getting six kilo ohm and it's pretty reliable there. Um, that's not bad, uh, but you'll see, so that's within the 10 kilo ohms that people seem to be thinking is acceptable. Um, that belt for me is constantly dropping out, it takes quite a while to actually get a signal to the Garmin, so I, I think 10 is probably a little bit high uh, from based on my experience. Uh, but here we go, hopefully this doesn't let me down now. Same thing, contacts together, bulldog clip on, whack it on the table, cut to the molding meter, probes together, checking that still getting a good circuit when they're touched, and now we go to the poly unit. All right, now we're down to 0.7. So under one kilo ohm. Now that's a belt that's done a few rides. I haven't washed it. Um, so, I don't know, I think that speaks for itself. If you're trying to measure, you know, a heart rate through a belt, then anything that gives you a better contact with your body is going to give you a better result, more reliable. So I don't put anything under that. A lot of people say a bit of water or something under the belt before you use it. I haven't worried with that and it picks up instantly. The other thing that people have mentioned as well is they felt that the polar belt buckles were slightly further apart, which they aren't from my point of view anyway. So there's the, the two there. So they're basically identical from my end. Garmin actually might be a fraction further apart. Um, that's it. And we can obviously clip it on and triple check that as well. There you go. So you can see that that's all pretty sweet. Uh, so that's it. Anyone that's having trouble with the Garmin Dual HRM strap, just grab the Polar one. There's, there's no issues. It's more comfortable. It's got a few little other things I'll point out, which is the little silicon blobs. It feels lighter, breathes better. Yeah, the clips actually a buckle clip rather than that loop thing that they do on the Garmin which can be a little bit fiddly this is faster to put on and off but none of that really matters because you only really want reliable data coming off it so uh, that's about long and short of it so anyway no one that's looking at the business YouTube's going to care about that but if you're having trouble with your heart rate monitor there's a quick uh, comparison from my end as to which way I've gone and it certainly fixed all my issues so enjoy
kid.